One of the traits that defines us most as humans is our desire to create. We love making stuff, everything from buildings to art, from Mars rovers to clickbait articles. And a lot of the things that we make outlast us, which is why we're able to do archaeology. By studying the debris left behind from past generations of humans, archaeologists can understand how human civilizations have evolved over time. It turns out that the stars in the sky aren't so different from us. Like people, stars make things. In their interiors, they forge heavy elements from the raw ingredients of hydrogen and helium. And in the same way that different humans leave behind different things, Egyptian pharaohs left behind pyramids, astrophysics grad students leave behind poorly documented codes, different kinds of stars also leave behind different elements when they die. And that's where I come in. I'm a galactic archaeologist. Just as archaeologists here on Earth study what past humans left behind, I study the elements that past stars left behind, and I use these to answer questions about how stars and galaxies evolve. In particular, I'm interested in how certain kinds of stars die. For example, our sun, which won't run out of fuel for another 5 billion years or so, but when it does, it'll leave behind its dead core, called a white dwarf. Most white dwarfs are just slowly cooling stellar corpses that don't really do much, they just float through space. But sometimes, just sometimes, a white dwarf will ignite. A chain of nuclear reactions will burn out of control until it consumes the entire white dwarf, producing one of the brightest explosions in the universe, what astronomers call a type 1a supernova. But we don't actually know what sets off these explosions. We're pretty sure that in order to get a white dwarf to explode, you need a companion star to dump a lot of material onto it. But we're still not sure about things like how much material is needed or what kind of star the companion is. Enter your friendly neighborhood galactic archaeologist. Type 1a supernovae produced lots of heavy elements like iron and nickel and manganese. And I'm personally a fanganese of manganese because the amount of manganese produced in a supernova depends on the mass of the white dwarf that exploded. So my thesis aims to narrow down the list of possible models for type 1a supernovae by measuring manganese and other elements in nearby galaxies. So far, I've found that most of the white dwarfs that explode, at least in some galaxies, they don't make a lot of manganese. So they must be relatively low mass, around the mass of the sun or less. And this is actually super different from the traditional picture of a type 1a supernova, which said that the white dwarf had to be more than the mass of the sun to explode. So there's still so much more that we can learn about these supernovae and about stars and galaxies in general, just from the debris of stars that died billions of years ago. So even though my thesis might not involve excavating ruins or raiding tombs, I hope you've enjoyed going on this galactic archaeological dig with me. Thanks.